In life, it's nice to be rewarded for doing difficult things. Work your socks off towards a PhD? Here's your doctorate. Smash that sales quota. Have a bonus. Remember to take the bins out on time. Go on, have a biscuit and a nice cuppa and a clean bin. The same is true in video games. When we do something tough, we expect games to acknowledge it and give us something cool in return. But sometimes things don't work out that way, and there are occasions when games give us nothing for our efforts. Sometimes, however, they give us worse than nothing. Nothing. Today, we're taking a look at those unlockables that just maybe weren't worth the effort. We're not saying all of the unlockables in this list can't be fun in their own little ways, just that the time players needed to invest to get them far outweighs the value of the compensation for doing so. With that in mind, I'm Ben from Triple Jump, and here are 10 video game unlockables that aren't worth your time. Number 10. Jumping Jack – Nino Kuni – Wrath of the White Witch in most games, jumping is a given, but in those rare games where it is a skill to be unlocked, it's a game changer. It seems, however, Nino Kuni Wrath of the White Witch didn't get that memo. In this game, players are able to complete 10 errands or bounties to fill out spots on a merit card. These cards can be turned over to the owner of a Swift Solutions shop in exchange for a prize. These range from the useful, such as increased likelihood of finding valuable items or increased experience gained from defeating enemies, to the useless, such as jumping. But why is jumping useless? Well, Nino Kuni simply wasn't built with that kind of traversal in mind. Main character Oliver, as sprightly as he may seem, can barely launch himself two inches off the ground. That means, no matter how hard you try, he will be unable to jump over even the smallest of ledges. Even if a wall or ditch looks easily surmountable, he'll still have to take the long way round. Still, there's some joy to be had hopping across the Studio Ghibli-esque world. As the skill's own in-game description reads, it's not very useful, but a whole lot of fun. Number 9. Stud Fountain Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga, Marvel's Avengers, Batman 3 Beyond Gotham, and more. Studs are the universal currency of all LEGO games, used to purchase new characters, vehicles, and extras such as invincibility and the ability to make all characters wear glasses, big noses, and a moustache, you know, the important stuff. Generally speaking, if you want to make the most out of a LEGO game, you'll want to collect as many studs as you can get your little plastic mitts on. The good news is these studs are quite literally everywhere. Smash every barrel, lamppost, and or droid you see, and you'll be rolling in studs in no time. But what if all that destruction of property sounds like too much hard work? Good news! Hidden away in most LEGO games is the mythical stud fountain. All you need to do is flip a switch and your little LEGO character will quite literally be showered with studs. Combine this with the unlockable stud multipliers and you'll have more money than you could ever imagine. The only downside is in order to start the fountain, players must have first 100% completed the game, a feat which already requires buying everything from the store. With nothing left to buy, what's the point in all that money? You can't even empty it into a vault and dive in Scrooge McDuck style. What a rip-off! Number 8. Extra Dokaka Song We Love Katamari 1 million is a very large number, at least according to our calculators. Its sheer enormity is difficult to wrap your head around, that is, until you are charged with collecting 1 million individual things, and then it very quickly starts to sink in. The Rose Nebula is the final stage in We Love Katamari, unlocked only after completing the rest of the game. Select it and the player will be approached by the King of All Cosmos himself and given a very special task to collect 1 million roses. The player is then dropped into a stage littered with the spiky flowers and told to go for it. As roses can only be collected individually or in bunches of ten, players shouldn't be surprised if this one task takes longer to complete than the entire rest of the game. This is not something to be finished in one sitting, and thankfully players can save and quit without losing their progress. But what is the reward for the many, many hours of your life sunk into attaining one million roses? A simple song. The extra Dokaka song plays once the millionth rose has been collected and the King of All Cosmos descends to congratulate the player for what truly is, in the words of the King himself, a pointless exercise. Number 7. Gold and Silver Pipes – Silent Hill 3 The pipe is a standard melee weapon found across the Silent Hill franchise, perfect for keeping the faceless, fleshless nasties of the fog-engulfed town at bay. Or, in our case, for swinging in wild, panicked fear as we run blindly for the next safe room. So when players discovered they could upgrade the pipe in Silent Hill 3 for either a gold or silver version, they jumped at the chance. After completing the game once and hopping into New Game Plus, players can play through the title as normal until they reach the sewer. Here, after defeating the tentacular terror lurking below, 
they are given the option of throwing their pipe into the water. While this may sound counterintuitive, doing so will see none other than the sewer fairy appear. Stay with us, we promise we're not making this up. Answer her questions truthfully, and she will grant the player both the gold and silver pipes. Lie, and they'll get nothing. Unfortunately, the upgrade is purely cosmetic, and these fancy bits of plumbing are no stronger than the original pipe and offer no bonuses whatsoever. They'd probably be worth quite a bit, though, if only, you know, you could sell them. Number 6. Excalibur 2 Final Fantasy IX Developers want to make obtaining the most powerful weapons in their game a challenge. They should be a fitting reward for those players willing to go the extra mile, otherwise where would be the fun in unlocking them? But what happens when the requirements to unlock the weapon are so difficult to pull off it essentially makes the weapon obsolete? Then you get the Excalibur 2 from Final Fantasy IX. Excalibur 2 is Steiner's ultimate weapon and the strongest in Final Fantasy IX, capable of dealing tremendous holy damage. The problem is, most players will never even see see it, because to unlock the weapon they'll have to beat the roughly 40 to 50 hour game in less than 12 hours. That means skipping past every side quest, avoiding every non-essential item, and generally making a beeline straight for the final boss. The thing is, anyone who can beat the game that quickly and that underleveled clearly has no need for such a powerful weapon. As difficult as this already was, gamers playing on the original PAL PlayStation versions had an even tougher time as the game runs noticeably slower than its North American and Japanese counterparts. Frankly, it would have been easier to pull the sword from the stone. Number 5. Auditory Cape Assassin's Creed 2 the Assassin's Creed series is notorious for littering its game's expansive maps with pointless collectibles. While most are there simply to pad out the runtime, some actually offer tangible or lore-related rewards. Collectibles like the Animus Anomalies in Valhalla or the Glyphs in Assassin's Creed 2 reward the player with videos and insights into the world of the first civilization, for example, but not all rewards are so… Uh, rewarding. This is something Assassin's Creed 2's feather-hunting side quests runs afoul of. You get it? Because birds. Early on in the game, players are tasked with collecting 100 feathers to help comfort Ezio's grieving mother. A worthy cause, perhaps, but what do we, the players, get for traipsing around Florence, Venice and the Tuscan countryside and collecting all 100 precariously placed plumes? A cape, which instantly aggros all enemies in the area, of course. Yes, help Ezio's mother and players will be gifted with the Auditory Cape, a garment which proudly displays the crest of the most wanted family in all of Italy, instantly raising the player's notoriety to maximum and alerting all guards to their presence. Wear this cape and you can't even pop to the shops without being swarmed by men with pointy swords. Thanks, Mum! Number 4. Invisible Hat – Super Mario Odyssey Mario and power-ups go together like milk and cookies or biscuits, and there isn't a Mario title that isn't full to bursting with weird and wacky ways to completely alter the gameplay. Super Mario Odyssey does things a little differently. Instead of the usual power-ups, Mario can fling his new friend Cappy at enemies in order to temporarily possess them. While incredibly morally questionable, seriously, what happens to the consciousness of the creatures he possesses? This does allow for Mario to swim as a fish or stomp around as a T-Rex. The one thing Cappy's possession power can't do is turn Mario invisible. That is, unless players find the A Long Journey's End multi-moon on the darker side of the moon. The darker side is a secret bonus level that can only be unlocked after collecting 500 power moons and is by far the most insanely challenging level in the entire game. Players with the dexterity and dedication to make it to the end are rewarded with the invisibility hat which turns Mario's character model completely invisible. As if the platforming wasn't tricky enough already, now you have to do it without even seeing where Mario is. Once you've got the invisible hat, just just be careful with it, you wouldn't want to go through all that trouble just to lose it in the closet. Number 3. Hestu's Gift – The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom if you thought 100 feathers or 500 moons was time-consuming enough, try collecting 900 Korok seeds in The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. These wayward seeds are spread out and hidden all across the lands of Hyrule and can only be obtained after completing a small puzzle and finding an enigmatic Korok. These puzzles run the gamut from the incredibly easy, i.e. knocking a boulder into a nearby hole, to the incredibly frustrating, i.e. shooting erratically moving targets with your bow. While the seeds are initially useful, as players will need to collect and hand them over to Hestu 
in order to upgrade their weapon stashes, they only need 441 seeds to fully upgrade everything. But what happens if players are crazy enough to track down the remaining 459? They will be rewarded with Hestu's Gift, a golden lump of Korok poo that smells pretty bad and serves absolutely no purpose. If I didn't know any better, I'd swear the developers were mocking us. To make things worse, Tears of the Kingdom decided to one-up this Herculean task by making the players collect a whopping 1,000 Korok seeds. All for the same prize, no less. At least the sequel lets you get your own back on those annoying little Koroks. Take that! Number 2. Algernon's Revolver and Exotic Hat – Red Dead Redemption 2 as you may have noticed, most of the unlockables on this list are rewards for particularly tedious collectible hunts. It's almost as if the developers themselves are telling us it's not worth the effort. Players exploring the outskirts of Saint Denis in Red Dead Redemption 2 may find themselves stumbling upon Algernon Wasp's greenhouse. Talking with him will start the stranger mission Duchesses and Other Animals, one that most players will never see the end of. This is because Mr. Wasp tasks them with collecting 182 incredibly rare and difficult to find eggs, feathers, and orchids. Broken down, that's 20 25 gator eggs, 65 rare feathers, and 92 exceedingly hard to spot orchids. While that may sound like small fry compared to the last entry, these items are so difficult to find without a guide that many players can go the entire game without even finding a single one. You'd hope then that Algernon would reward the player handsomely for their time, but no. His definition of a just reward is A, his revolver, which is worse than most of the guns the player can find over the course of the story, and 2, the exotic hat, which looks no different to a dozen other hats of available in the game. Perhaps the real reward was the creatures we shot along the way? Number 1. Prowler's Prophet, The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim there's just enough time for one more collectathon reward. The Stones of Berenzaya are the bane of Skyrim players across the land. In fact, just saying their name is enough to trigger flashbacks and nightmares. Ugh. These stones can be found scattered all across Skyrim, from the deepest caves to the Jarl of Solitude's bedchambers. They will initially appear in the player's inventory as unusual gems, but once appraised, they are revealed as the Stones of Berenzaya, and the quest to find them all begins. There are only 24 in total, but they are so well hidden that most players won't find them all until they've completed everything else the game has to offer, and this being an Elder Scrolls game, there's quite a lot to do. Those who don't complete the quest will see these stones forever in their inventories as a reminder of what they could never finish. Those who do, however, will be rewarded with the passive skill Prowler's Profit, which grants players an increased likelihood of finding gemstones while exploring. Seeing as coin isn't exactly hard to come by in the world of Skyrim, this is all but worthless. Plus, after completing this quest, more gems are the last thing anyone would want to see. We'd have taken Literally anything else, Todd, why have you forsaken us again?